Dr. Peterson, I'm considering going into the education stream slash system. Um, do you have any advice for me not to become a mouthpiece for indoctrinating young students? Well, one thing I would recommend is that you don't write essays that you don't believe in. Um, I think that's a sin. I think it's a sin to use your words falsely. And the reason for that, like, there's a good series of social psychology experiments that show, like, imagine that you bring someone into a lab and you have them write an essay about or fill out a questionnaire about their political opinions, you know, so you get a baseline measure of their political stance. And then you ask them to write a thousand words, maybe they identify as right wing, and then you get them to write a thousand word essay on why a particular left wing position is true. And then you have them come back in two weeks and you give them the same political belief questionnaire, they'll, they'll have shifted quite radically towards the left. And the reason for that is that people don't think through their positions in great detail. And so if you get them to think through a contrary position in great detail, then that starts to become more convincing. And so if you go into a field like education that's really um, pathologically overrun by the postmodern neo-Marxist types, you're going to experience a tremendous amount of pressure to falsify your words. You're going to be afraid that if you don't do that, you're going to fail. And maybe sometimes you will be punished by a professor, but I would say in most circumstances I'm still optimistic enough to believe that if you write a good essay that isn't ideologically proper, you'll still get a good grade. And I guess I would say if you write a good essay that's not ideologically proper and you don't get a good grade, that's probably a good time to fight. So, because you either fight or capitulate, right? That's, that's, the, that's the hard truth. So, um, I'm not saying it would be easy, and I would also say don't make unnecessary enemies, right? You don't, everything doesn't have to be a battle, but now and then you're going to know that, you know, you'll hate writing the essay because you have to sacrifice your soul in order to put the words down, and then you, you, you dement and warp your character, and you just don't recover easily from that, so I would say don't do that, man. That's not good. I've recently developed a nasty case of hypnophobia and generally suffer from anxiety surrounding sleep. It's become a significant negative force in my life, cause unknown. I'm rather well put together and successful across many domains. Any advice? Yes. Go to bed later. So one of the things that happens to people when they're having a hard time going to sleep and their sleep is disrupted is that they tend to go to bed earlier to catch up on their sleep. And that actually has a counter that's co that works at counter purposes to what they're trying to attempt. Um, what you want to do is delay your sleep until you're really quite tired, so stay up much later. Get up at the same time in the morning, eh? but move your sleep time later, maybe half an hour a night, till you actually do fall asleep. Um, the other thing that you could look into is that there are relaxation exercises. Behavior therapists offer those, but I'm sure you could find one online, a breathing exercise. And so often what you do is imagine you're laying in your bed and you're nervous, and so what you do is you concentrate on your feet, and you flex your toes, and then breathe in and out and relax them, and then you flex your ankles, uh, or the soles of your feet, and, and breathe in and out, and relax, and, and do that with every muscle group all the way up your body, and remember to breathe deeply and regularly, and that can help regulate your anxiety. So I would say stay up later till you're clearly tired. Um, the other thing you might try is sleeping in a different room. Um, and then the, uh, the final thing is there are pretty effective sleep medications like Zaploplon, for example, which is, seems to be pretty effective. And if you're really having a hard time sleeping, maybe you could try something like that and see if it, and see if it helps. You don't have to try it forever. But so the simplest thing to do, though, is to go to bed later and because you'll be more tired and more likely to fall asleep then. And it's really not going to cause you any trouble. So that's what I would recommend.